I'm at Kate S. Durden Public School, home of the Knights. Let's explore with food-based paint. We see colors when we paint. We see colors in nature. But have you ever wondered if you can use your foods to paint a picture? I'm Mr. Spence. Let's make some food-based paint. Our ingredients really depend, and since Thanksgiving just happened, uh, you might want to use some of your scraps from Thanksgiving. I find some that do well are spinach, beets, and carrots. Okay. Um, blueberries also work well, and I've chopped some up because you'll want to chop them up. And you're roughly going to put two cups of water uh, to a boil. Okay, and that's what I'm doing right here. So it's very hot. So you'll want to get mommy or daddy or, or grandpa or grandma to help you with this, someone older. Um, and then you have one cup of your cut vegetable or fruit. So you can put that in. We have it as a boil right now. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to turn down the temperature. Okay. And make sure that it's just around medium so that it simmers. And you'll want to leave it to simmer for about an hour. Did you know the colors we see in plants like the leaves on trees is caused by the plants need to turn sunlight into energy? The chlorophyll in the leaf actually likes red and blue wavelengths to use as food for the tree. Let's use a rainbow as an example. Okay, the rainbow has lots of different colors in it. A leaf may appear green because it likes red and blue wavelengths. So think of it this way. It likes to eat all these different colors. And what's left over is green. Okay, so the green is reflected back out because it doesn't want to absorb that wavelength. And that's why the leaf looks green. So what happens in the fall is it starts getting cooler and there's less sunlight. So there's a breakdown of chlorophyll trying to absorb the other colors. And that's why we start to notice the leaves changing. Now that we've been waiting and letting this simmer for an hour, you're going to notice that the water in it, it's a little hard to see, but the water in it is actually starting to change color. Okay, remember I put blueberries in this example. So it's sort of got almost a, a purplish color to it. Okay, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to strain it. And remember, have mommy or daddy help you with this. You're going to want to strain it into a glass container. So that way, you have all the blueberries still up here and we're just focusing on the juices right here. This is what we want, okay? So I'm gonna take this away and what we have left over <coughs> is actually a nice pigmented color, okay? So we're gonna let that cool. Okay, when it's about room temperature, parents, then it will be ready to use. Okay, so we got to let it cool down for a little bit. Now that your pigmented liquid has cooled down, you're going to take about a tablespoon of that and you're going to mix it in with about six tablespoons of powdered sugar. And then you're going to mix it up. Okay, and as you can see, it's starting to get more colorful, but thicker at the same time. Okay, and there you have it. We have our own plant-based paint made from food. So in addition to the, the plants and the fruits that we can use to make our paint, uh, there's also a cheat method, okay? And this one I'm including as well because uh, some of our parents might be uncomfortable with us boiling water. I mean, that, that, that can be very dangerous, right? And that's why I asked you to get help from your parents or your grandparents. Um, so here's the cheat method, and I think it's a little fun too. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get little containers and fill them up with just warm water. And then if you have Skittles, you can put different color Skittles to make different colors. So I'm gonna put some purple ones in. I'm gonna put some green in a different container. Yellow. Orange. and red. So what's going to happen is you're going to notice, I'm going to bring my camera over here. You're going to notice that 
the colors are going to start coming off of the Skittles, okay? And they're actually gonna go into the water. So once you notice that all the Skittles are white, then that's probably about ready. We're gonna remove the Skittles, okay? So we'll just give that a few moments. So as you can see now, I removed all the Skittles that were once colorful and they're all white now, but the colors remained with the water in the dish. So now we're gonna do the same thing as we did for our plant-based paint, and we're gonna mix in some powdered sugar. So it's gonna be the same. We had about one tablespoon of water going this with the Skittles, and then now we're gonna put six tablespoons of the powdered sugar. Okay, now that we've mixed this, we have a beautiful palette of paint here. See that? A nice food-based paint. Okay. So now we need to discover with our senses. So the first one's our sense of touch, okay? What does the paint feel like? If you were to stick your finger in and start finger painting, what do you notice? Then we have our sense of sight, okay? What do you notice about the different paints that you made? Because remember, not everybody's ingredients are the same, right? So you may notice that some are very similar in color, even though you use different foods, or maybe some are very different than you expected. Okay, next one is sound. Now, there's things in this experiment that you might have noticed with the sound, maybe the boiling of the water, but right now I don't hear much to it, okay? Then there's a sense of taste. How does each one taste? Do they taste different from each other? Did they taste different when they were in their vegetable form or their fruit form to now? Why? Okay, the last one, smell. How does the smell of your paint compare to when it was in its original form. Okay, those are all things to consider. And then an additional extension activity here. You can use your paint to make a nice fall picture with many different natural colors. Okay, so as always, go explore with your food-based paint and have fun.